The time has come. The end of a long journey. To reach the top will take courage, strength, and endurance. Some will fall short, left with only disappointment and tears. The others will be crowned champions. Joe Louis Arena has always been synonymous with Red Wings hockey and the greatest players in the NHL, but for the last three years, it has also meant the greatest high school wrestling competition the state has to offer as well. It is here where 56 champions will be crowned, and you'll see it on Fox Sports Net. How you doing, everybody? Alongside my partner, Mark Torella, a three-time national champion. My name is Matt Shepard. Welcome to the Division I and Division II state championship wrestling competition. And Mark, this event started with nearly 900 wrestlers representing 315 schools. These kids are on the verge of reaching the pinnacle of their high school careers, aren't they? That's true, Matt. It starts well before they get to Joe Louis Arena. There's district, there's regional competition, then the best of the best make it to Joe Louis Arena. There's many freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior class members that are looking to have their lifelong dream of becoming a Michigan high school individual state champion. What does it take to get to this level? The blood, the sweat, the tears, the responsibility, and the sacrifices made not only by players, but also by their families. There's no question that there's a lot of sacrifice that's involved in competing in the sport of wrestling. Michigan high school wrestling is no different. There's a lot of top quality wrestlers, there's a lot of top quality competition, and we look for the best to happen here. We start out with 275 pounders at the heavyweight division. Then we immediately go down to the smallest class, 103 pounds. Then to 112, 119, 125, 130, 135, 140 pounds, 145, 152, 160, 171, 189, and finish with the 215 pound wrestlers. A lot of championship matches on tap for us here on Fox Sports Net. Let's get right to it. First, the big fellas, 275 pounds. Jack Gittler of Berkeley hoping to follow up his state title in the discus with his first wrestling crown. He's up against Granville sophomore Ryan Gritter, who makes his first ever appearance in the state tournament. We pick up the action in the second period with Gittler leading 1-0. Ritter shoots a high single leg and changes off to a strong double leg finish to score the first takedown of the match and take a 2-1 lead. Ritter starts the third period in the bottom position. Ritter hits a stand-up, changes off from a single to a double leg and finishes with an inside trip to score a two-point reversal. Leading 4-3, Gritter shoots a high single leg and lifts Gittler off the mat to score the final takedown of the match. So Gritter wins it 6-5 to become the Division I 275-pound champion. Let's take you to Division II, also the heavyweights. This time Fenton's John Hurstein hoping to head for Wayne State with a title in tow. He's up against Jim Bunn of Heartland who hopes for the same as he makes his way to Saginaw Valley State University next year. Let's start in the second period with Hurstein leading 2-1. Hurstein clamps on to Bunn with a powerful bear hug to score a takedown and increase his lead to 4-1. Bunn gets right back in the match, scoring a one-point escape with a solid stand-up. With 14 seconds remaining in the match, Bunn trailing 4-3, goes for broke with a chest-to-chest -chest throw attempt that is countered by Hurstein, who scores the final takedown of the match. That allows Hurstein to double up Bunn 6-3 and win the Division II 275-pound crown. Let's go to Division I, 103-pound championship on the line, boasting a couple of sophomores with 50 wins on the year. Randy Vanderveen of East Kentwood and top-ranked Josh Chirella from Novi. Mark, uh, this guy follows uh, like his old man. He's a shoo-in, right? I don't know about that. He's the youngest one of three. We'll see how he does. Chirella starts his attack in the first period with a low single leg and hits a strong dump finish to take an early two-point lead. Leading 3-0 in the second period, Chirella counters Vanderveen's single leg and scores another two-point takedown. In the third period, Chirella shoots a lightning fast low single and finishes out the back door to score the takedown and increase his lead to 7-1. That's just how you planned it, right, Mark? Absolutely. All right, Josh Torello winning the Division I 103-pound class. 
to Division Two. Again, 103-pound championship on the line. This time it's Brian Nguyen advancing to his first ever final as a freshman and representing Warren Fitzgerald. He battled his junior Tony Greathouse of Mason. Greathouse gets off to a quick start in the first period with a fireman's carry finishing out the back door to score a two-point takedown. Nguyen comes right back with a stand-up short sit-out combination to score a one-point escape, closing the score to 2-1. to one. Greathouse goes back on the offensive with an ankle pick low single combination to score another takedown. Greathouse with a 7-1 lead in the second period works a near wrist half Nelson combination to take Nguyen to his back and scores a fall at three minutes, two seconds of the second period. So Tony Greathouse with the pin wins the 103 pound Division II championship. Back to Division I, the 112-pound weight class has Ryan Beach of Wald Lake Western with 112 wins seeking his first individual state medal. Nate Garcia was unable to make weight after his semifinal match, so Beach captures this year's state title at 112 pounds by forfeit. Not the way he wanted to win it, but a championship is still a championship. To Division II, the 112-pound weight class, Phil Schaefer of Mount Pleasant trying to avoid a second straight runners-up title against Lowell sophomore Brandon Kinney, who boasts 100 career wins and a 55-0 record this season. In the second period, with the score tied at zero, Kenny scores the first point of the match with a quick sit-out. Later in the second period, Kinney shoots a double leg takedown and Schaefer counters with an awesome chin whip and scores a two-point takedown. Leading 3-1 in the third period, Schaefer catches Kenny in a front headlock whip over and scores a two-point takedown. Phil Schaefer picks up the win, his 112-pound Division II championship, his first of his career, and he feels good about his efforts at the Joe Louis Arena. Six champions have been crowned so far. Team championships were crowned earlier in the season, including Lapeer West. When we come back, we'll take a look at their program as our coverage of the MHSAA Wrestling Championship from Joe Louis Arena continues on Fox Sports Net after this. High School Wrestling Championships on Fox Sports Net is proudly sponsored by Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable, by Little Caesars, and by Olympia Entertainment. For months, for some kids, for years, it has been a lifelong dream for them to get to this level. It is the pinnacle of the State High School Wrestling Association, and it takes place at Joe Lewis Arena, only here on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back. It is very difficult to repeat as a champion in any sport, especially in the sport of wrestling. Lapeer West has done it for a second straight year. This is a team that is maybe the best team overall, no matter what division. give him a good workout. He's a lot of dedication and all the kids, all the kids work after practice. Some kids stay after practice. They, they go up to the recreational center and work out there and they do a lot on their own too. So that's really helped the team out a lot. I try to scream things that I, that I know that my teammates could use or stuff that I know that'll work and they're not, they're not doing. Winning or losing is not the issue. The issue is trying your best. Because in life, you're going to fail many, many times. But if you try your best, you'll succeed in the long run. And that's the lesson that we try to teach these kids. Be a team player, team sport, and kind of support everybody and not just think about yourself. Wrestling's not just individual, it's team, too. There is no drinking. There's no smoking. There's no drugs. Um, kids are, know that we demand 
uh, superior academics on the club. And they know that all of that is part of winning a state championship team. Our kids know that if they go on the ineligibility list, for example, that they're not affecting themselves, they're affecting 40 brothers. Same thing that if they're lazy in practice or they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing in practice, they know they're not letting themselves down, they're letting down 40 brothers. And these kids surely believe that they are brothers. Everyone being a family, everyone on our team staying close together and uh, just, we do everything together. I mean, a lot of kids come to our house after meets. None of our kids are into drugs or anything like that, so it's, it's just that much better. Lapeer West, one of the more successful programs in the entire state, and Mark, it really starts when they're young. They have a little Raptors program, then it continues on to junior high. Obviously, something's working well for Lapeer West. Well, the feeder system they have is an outstanding one, and their youth program is one of the best in the state. I think that uh, by the time they get to high school, they're really ready to compete. Well, that's why they were able to compete here at Joe Lewis Arena and be so successful in doing so. More competition from the JLA on Fox Sports Net comes your way right after this. Welcome back to Joe Lewis Arena. Fox Sports Net's continuing coverage of the MHSAA Wrestling Championships at the Division I and Division II level. Let's get right back to it. At the Division I 119 pound class, it fits a couple of uh, athletes who finished fourth last year. Troy High's uh, student body president, Nick Best, against undefeated Brad Kuzmano from Utica. We pick up the action midway in the first period. Kuzmano gets on the scoreboard first with a sharp double leg takedown to score the first two points of the match. After best scores an escape to close the gap to one, Kuzmano converts another powerful double leg takedown to make the score 4-1. With one minute 30 seconds remaining in the second period, Best fights to stay in the match and works off the bottom with a stand up and scores a one point escape. Kuzmano wins it 4-2 to capture the division one 119 pound crown. To Division Two, same weight class. A couple of juniors will settle this Division Two championship. Fenton's Lambros Catalis, who won it all at 112 pounds just a year ago, against Ian DeRath from Lowell, who's lost just once all season long, Mark. In the second period, with the match tied at zero, DeRath takes the lead, working a body scissors into a guillotine to score a three-point near fall. DeRath gets too high with his leg ride and Catalis reverses him for two points, making the score 3-2. In the third period, with DeRath leading 4-2, Catalis shoots a double leg and changes off to a single. Fights for nearly 25 seconds and scores the takedown to tie the match at 4-4. With 15 seconds remaining in the third period, DeRath hits a switch to score the match-winning reversal. Exciting match right there. Some of those moves sound dangerous too, but dangerous enough for Ian Durant to capture the 119 pound Division II championship. The 125 pound Division I class showcases two seniors. Kyle Kluster of Grand Haven, who finished third a year ago, goes up against Holtz Jack Scott, who's never finished better than fifth until now. Scott goes to work immediately in the first period with a great double leg shot to take an early 2-0 lead. After Kluster scores an escape to narrow the lead to one, Scott continues his attack on his feet, scoring a rock-solid double leg takedown. In the second period, Scott scores a one-point escape and immediately shoots another blistering double leg takedown to extend his lead to seven to one. Late in the third period, Kluster counters Scott's double leg attempt and scores a takedown with a front headlock throw by. Too little too late for Kyle Kluster though, Jack Scott wins it. 8 to 4 and wins the Division 1 125 pound crown. <laughs> On to Division 2, the 125 pound crown, Phil Plowman of Lakewood Lake Odessa has gotten better each year in this tournament and now wrestles Jason Fellows of Lapeer West for the 125 pound championship mark. Bellow shoots a tenacious single leg and changes off to a double leg finish to score a two point takedown in the first period. Plowman comes right back, scoring a two point reversal with a risky high leg step over. With the match tied in the second period at two, Fellow scores a two point takedown with an excellent low single leg attack. Leading 4-2 in the third period, Fellows hits an outstanding Granby roll to score a two point reversal. 
So Fellows able to pull away at the end and wins the 125 pound Division II championship. The 130 pound weight class in Division I has Davidson's Chase Metcalf in his perfect season battling regional champ Mike Sherman of Belleville. We pick up the match in the second period with Metcalf dominating the match 11-4. Metcalf scores a takedown with an outstanding low single and immediately goes on the attack scoring a near fall with an over the body arm bar and finishes with a tight front headlock. In the third period leading 15 to 4, Metcalf continues his relentless attack on Sherman with a front headlock whip over scoring yet another impressive takedown. Metcalf counters Sherman's single leg takedown attempt and scores the final points of the match. Big win for him. Chase Metcalf, the 130 pound Division I champion after the 23 to 8 decision. Fowlerville's Bill Devine wrestles for the 130 pound crown in Division II after winning the freestyle championship. He'll have to beat three time qualifier. Bart Rizzo of Plainwell. In the first period, trailing two to one, Devine shoots a great high single leg and scores a two point takedown, gaining a three to two lead. With the score five three in the second period, Rizzo catches Devine in a guillotine and scores a near fall. Devine slips out of the punishing move and reverses Rizzo, taking him directly to his back. Devine scores the fall. Just the way he planned it, Bill Devine of Fowlerville pins Bart Rizzo of Plainwell at the 508 mark and wins the Division II 130 pound championship. Well, plenty more to come here at Joe Lewis Arena. You know, there are more than 25 sets of brothers in this tournament wrestling for top honors. We break down a few of them and talk with them as our continuing coverage from Joe Lewis Arena on Fox Sports Net rolls on after this. They have crowned two Stanley Cup champions here over the last four years, and today Joe Louis Arena will be remembered as the ultimate wrestling experience for 56 state champions. You know, there are more than 20 sets of brothers strapping on their wrestling headgears with the hope of standing atop the podium at day's end with a state championship title. For them and their parents, wrestling is more than just a sport. It's a family affair. High school wrestling in Michigan can be described as a family event where coaches are fathers and fathers become coaches. Family and friends are there too, watching from a distance, cheering their sons on to victory. A sport like wrestling takes discipline, courage, and attitude. It's an individual sport, yes, but it is also a team sport. But in a game where advantage is crucial to victory, some kids have a little extra help in their corner. A teammate, a brother. We're pretty close. We're pretty close, I think. We do a lot together. We spend a lot of time together, hang out a lot. We, we wrestle a lot together. I mean, when we're just at home messing around, we still, we, we still just roll around, wrestle around, just messing around. Yeah, we, we spend a lot of time together, too, outside of practice, and we hang out with each other. We're a little close brothers, and uh, I think that helps, too just uh, throughout the year because it's such a tough sport and long sport that uh, we know each other so good and it seems like we don't uh, fight as much in season because we're all uh, usually cutting weight and uh, a lot more tired than in the off season. We practice during the summer and if there's nobody to work with me he'll work with me wrestle around with me so I'll be able to hone my skills a little bit better but most of the time he just takes it to me. <laughs> Trying to keep up with him is pretty much the hardest thing I mean he's so good he got so good real quick and I think I've only placed higher than in one tournament in my high school career, so he's tough and he works hard every day. The last two years I've been the little brother on the team, so it's kind of nice to be the big brother and boss him around a little bit and tell him to get in gear when he's uh, slacking off or something. It's kind of fun. Wrestling coaches understand what it takes to win, and they understand the sacrifices their athletes make. And for brothers, they know having someone close to you on your team may make those sacrifices just a little easier to handle. Wrestling can bring a family together very, very much so. You, uh, you know, you sacrifice a lot. These kids sacrifice a lot. Their weekends, 
uh, going out with their buddies, uh, food. You know, it's it's wrestling's a very tough sport, and, and to make it through it, it's a long season, and to make it through it, you got to stick together. You got to be able to, hey, when things are down, and you're not in the best mood, you can go to someone that understands that. Regular brothers argue, compete, and sometimes they even wrestle for fun. Sometimes we fight. It's, it's all right. I mean, we get along. We do a lot of things together. And for the most part, it's, it's pretty good. I practice with him, and sometimes I take him down. I think that motivates him to hurt me a little bit more. Well, they're typical brothers. I mean, there's times where they're fighting, not getting along, but on the wrestling mat, you won't see, you, you'll see, see them cheering one another on. You know, it's never a, a bickering thing. Once, once they're on the mat, it's, they're cheering each other on. It will come as no surprise that human nature soon takes over in a sport so grueling and so challenging as wrestling. When one brother watches another battling on the mat, emotions flow quickly. Yeah, I always knew he'd be a, a wrestler just because he's been uh, that grinding and tough uh, kid ever since he's little because he's always the youngest one on our block but uh, I get more nervous for him than I than when I'm wrestling and uh, after his match I'm, I'm not even really that much that nervous anymore for myself so kind of helps in that uh, factor that watching his match doesn't make me as nervous. Well some will be successful some won't. We do know that a successful bloodline is right here. The Torella family, your two sons, talk about them making it to the state championship matches and how much pride you have? Well, I'm very proud, obviously, as a father and a coach that both boys wrestle, and they both made it to the uh, Michigan State Finals. It's not just being at the finals. It's really talking about what happens with the entire family, not just our family, but the 28 others that are a part of brothers that are in this tournament. Yeah, no question about it. You talk about brothers, you talk about siblings, parents, your grandparents, or their grandparents, I should say. There's a, this is really a family affair, isn't it? There's no question it's a family affair. There's many, many people that are here in this crowd that are all related to somebody that's wrestling. It's probably one of the uniquenesses in wrestling, a close-knit family, almost a fraternal organization. An awful lot of pride felt here inside Joe Lewis Arena. Stick around. More wrestling comes your way. You don't want to go away. We've got it coming to you from Joe Lewis Arena on Fox Sports Net in a moment. Welcome back to downtown Detroit. We continue our coverage of the MHSAA Wrestling Championships here on Fox Sports Net. We're at Division I, the 135-pound class. Joe Whitman of Davison tries to follow up his two cross-country state titles with a wrestling one. Romeo's Dan Seedzik is the man trying to deny him and claim his first ever state crown. We pick up the action in the first period with Seedzik leading two to one. Whitman hits a solid high crotch takedown to grab a three to two lead. Seedzik elects to begin the second period on his feet. Trailing by one point, Seedzik counters Whitman's high crotch attempt and catches Whitman with a super tight splay though. Seedzik pins Whitman in 2 minutes 12 seconds of the second period. Big win for Dan Seedzik of Romeo, capturing the Division I 135 pound championship. Bubba Gingrich of Lowell goes for the 135 pound title in Division II. He's up against senior Aaron Beach of Jackson Northwest, who lost just once in 48 tries this year, Mark. Beach starts off quickly with a great fireman's carry takedown to score the first two points of the match. Beach adds to his lead in the second period with a tenacious half Nelson that takes Ginrich to his back for a two-point near fall. In the third period, Beach shoots a double leg and scores another two-point takedown to take a commanding 8-1 to one lead. So Aaron Beach of Jackson Northwest wins it 8-3 in the 135-pound Division II championship. Two state champions from last season wrestle for the 140-pound Division I crown. Joe Zolne is the defending champion from Holt. Justin Sinclair of Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central moves up a class after winning the 135-pound class just a year ago. Halfway into the first period, Zolne scores a two-point takedown with a solid high crotch shot. Sinclair trailing 6-0 in the third period is unable to get any offense going. With 41 seconds remaining in the match, Sinclair receives his final caution for stalling. Zolne wins the match by disqualification. Boy, tough way to end two great seasons for two great athletes, but 
Joe Zolnay of Holt wins it. 140 pound Division I championship, his second straight title. Lowell's Calibo Boyle is hoping the fourth time's a charm in his quest for a championship at the 140 pound Division II level. He's undefeated in 57 matches this year. He'll go up against Eaton Rapids junior Matt Cataline, a runner-up a year ago. After a scoreless first period, O'Boyle scores the first point of the match in the second period with a solid stand-up escape. With 30 seconds remaining in the third period, Cataline works to his feet and throws O'Boyle with an awesome wizard whip, scoring a two-point reversal to take the lead in the match. And that was good enough to give him the 2-1 decision. Matt Cataline of Eaton Rapids wins the 140-pound Division II championship. Brighton record holder Leif Olsen, a runner-up in 2000, goes for the Division I 145-pound crown, but he's up against Novi's Ryan Chirella, who's hoping to cap off a perfect season with his second straight championship, become Novi's first-ever back-to-back championship, and follow in his younger brother's footsteps, who's already won a crown earlier today, Mark. Leif Olsen and Ryan Chirella, two great kids that have competed against each other several times already this year. Olsen goes on the attack with a low single leg takedown. Chirella counters the single leg takedown attempt and shoots a solid single leg and hits a dump finish, changing off to a double leg, scoring the first two points of the match. In the second period, Chirella extends his lead to three, scoring a strong stand-up escape. Chirella goes on the attack with an outstanding high crotch shot, extending his lead over Olsen to five. In the third period, Chirella counters Olsen's high crotch attempt with a strong spin by cross face combination to score the final takedown of the match. A dominating performance by Ryan Chirella. Mark, obviously you're very proud, becoming Novi's first ever back-to-back -back champion. His undefeated season and his outstanding performance in the finals, I'm very proud. You should be. Division I champion at the 145-pound weight class, Ryan Chirella. Same weight class, Division II this time. It pits top-rated James Kish of Lapeer West, a title holder at 140 pounds last year, and he's up against Fenton's Mike Pickover. Kish goes right on the attack in the first period with a double leg takedown. Leading four to one in the first period, Kish works a tenacious armbar wing combination on Pickover to score a three-point near fall. Kish adds to his lead in the second period, scoring a takedown with a single leg to a powerful throw by finish for two points. And he's able to finish off Mike Pickover with no problem. He wins it 14 to one to capture another championship, this time at the 145 pound class in division two. All right, when we come back, a closer look at one of the finest wrestling programs in all the state. Temperance Bedford won another division one state championship. We'll find out more about them in a moment. For some of these grapplers, it is their first trip inside Joe Louis Arena for a competitive match. Wrestlers need four wins here to win a weight class title. And welcome back. A lot of folks get here inside Joe Louis Arena, they get the crowd around them and suddenly they get a little intimidated. The school probably most comfortable, Temperance Bedford. Our goals as far as what the team accomplishes is, is, is always the same. Um, Building Near started this program 30 years ago, 35 years, 36 years ago now and they, they brought it to a level that every year we want to be state champs and every year we're in the hunt for the state championship. Last year we got beat in the semis, the year before we won that, the year before that runner-ups and the year before that we were in the semis. So we're there all the time, we always put that out front and these kids last year, they went undefeated other than the one loss in the state tournament, won all their tournaments. We lost in the semis and it was disappointing. We felt like we didn't accomplish what we needed to do. So. I mean, we set our goals really high, and, and every kid expects to make them happen. We pull together as a family. We can all feel how everybody's doing. We know if someone's wrestling the best and some of, if they're not wrestling the best, and we can cheer for them as much as we can and bring them back up so that they can wrestle as good as they can. Each one of these kids care about each other. Each one cares about the program. We'll get into uh, a situation. Uh, Chad Diddy, our 19-pounder, could have wrestled in the individual but he preferred to just wrestle in the team. He was hurt and he could have possibly done the individual too, but he said, I can do better for the team if I don't. We all support each other at all times and make sure that no one gets down. Because if one person gets down, they'll drag other people down and by pulling them up, we act as a team together and we'll make sure that we come out on top. 
We got up at uh, 6.45 or 6.30 this morning and we ran this morning to get ready for this. Our kids are willing to sacrifice, they're willing to pay the price. They understand, we're always talking about that if you do the right thing, if you, if you pay for it in advance, that something good will come out of it. We have four captains and we four come together and we talk about if there's someone that's down that we need to bring up, we talk about that if someone's hurt, situations in the rest of the room, like if someone's not getting along, things like that. We need to make sure we're all working together, all friendly, so we don't have any kind of fights and everybody's working as hard as they can. We've got talented, talented kids like Justin. We've got average kids. We've got some kids that have very little talent. We've got kids with tremendous heart, good, smart kids. We've got some tough kids that we have to discipline and do some things with. So we, we're such a big program. We'll have, we've probably got about 55 kids in the program plus another 25 girls. So we're going to have a mixture of everything. Oh, the mules have been kicking for a long time at 11 state championships. How do they keep doing it year after year, Mark? Well, it's really amazing, but uh, Bill Regnier was the head coach there for many, many years. Denny Brighton stepped right in just a few years ago and has carried on the tradition. I guarantee you no one makes fun of their school's nickname, not when you've got a wrestling program like Temperance Bedford. All right, when we come back, the wrestling continues at Joe Lewis Arena on Fox Sports Net. Stick around. Welcome back to downtown Detroit, better known as Hockey Town throughout the world, but uh, today it's Wrestling Town. State champions being crowned left and right here at Joe Lewis Arena, and you're only seeing it here on Fox Sports Net. We take you to Division I, the 152-pound championship on the line. Zamoir Pittman from Flint Carmen Ainsworth seeks his second straight 152-pound title and third straight overall. He's up against Tommy Garza of Southgate Anderson, the school record holder for most takedowns. Pittman goes on the offense in the first period with a double leg into a bear hug and finishes with a solid body lift to score the first takedown of the match. Garza trailing four to three in the second period counters Pittman's body lock throw to score a takedown and grab the lead five to four. With the score tied at five, Garza again is able to counter Pittman's body lock throw attempt and takes the lead again, seven to five. Pittman trailing in the third period, unleashes a powerful double leg into a lateral drop finish, scoring a two point takedown and three point near fall. Big comeback win for Zemoir Pittman who wins the 152 pound division one championship for the second straight year. A couple of seniors strapping it on in the 152-pound Division II weight class. Jeff Stevens of Mason, who finished second last year, versus three-time regional champ James Christie, who set the Battle Creek Lakeview record for wins in a season. In the first period, Christie finishes a good single leg takedown to score two points and immediately gets busy on top, catching Stevens with a Navy ride near wrist turn to score a three-point near fall. Trailing 7-0 in the second period, Stevens gets on the scoreboard using a quarter Nelson to gain a reversal. In the third period, Stevens starts in the bottom position, scoring a one-point escape with a grand B-roll, closing the gap to 7-3. Too little too late though, James Christie of Battle Creek Lakeview wins it 8-5 to capture the 152-pound crown in Division II. At Division I, the 160-pound record on the line, it's Hudsonville's Brandon Shuck, an all-state football player, up against Livonia Stevenson's all-time leader in wins, Imad Karbush. Karbush wasted no time in the first period, immediately scoring the first two-point takedown of the match with a powerful single leg with a body lift finish. Karbush works a near-wrist crotch lift combination on Shuck to score a two-point near fall, extending his lead to four. In the second period, leading nine to two, Harbush counters Shook's headlock takedown attempt and almost scores a near fall. Harbush continues his offensive barrage in the third period with an overpowering double leg shot, scoring yet another takedown. And Harbush would roll from there, winning it 13 to four in the 160 pound division one championship. A pair of regional champs square off for bragging rights in the 160-pound class of Division II. Luke French of Matawan and Chelsea's George Fairley. 
Barely fights off French's takedown attempt and comes back with a great high crotch to score the first two points of the match. In the second period, Fairley goes on the attack with a wicked cross-face cradle, scoring a three-point near fall to extend his lead to 5-0. Fairley continues his relentless offensive attack on top, scoring a two-point near fall with a powerful cross-body, cross-face Turk combination. Yeah, Fairley very impressive in this one, Mark. He wins it 9-1 to capture the 160-pound Division II championship. Matt McCartney tries to better his second place finish in 2000 with a 171 pound Division I title over Catholic Central's Ryan Rogowski who helped the Shamrocks to a football championship in the fall that you saw right here on Fox Sports Net. We pick up the action in the second period with McCartney leading 1-0. McCartney shoots a single leg and changes off to a double leg finish to score the takedown and extend his lead to 3-0. Late in the second period, Rogowski explodes off the bottom with a strong stand-up to score a one-point escape. With the score tied at three late in the third period, McCartney scores a hard-fought takedown with a commanding front headlock throw-by combination to take the lead 5-3. And that's how it would end right there, Mark. McCartney beats Rogowski 5-3 for 171-pound Division I bragging rights. Undefeated All-American Roger Kish from Lapeer West aims for his second consecutive state crown, this time in the 171-pound Division II class. He's opposed by Andy Boynton of East Grand Rapids. Kish wasted no time scoring a two-point takedown and three-point near fall, which started one second into the first period with an outstanding fireman's carry. Later in the first period, leading 9-3, Kish hits a powerful cross-body single leg to score another two-point takedown. In the second period, Kish hits a huge double leg takedown, lifting Boynton off the mat and taking him directly to his back with a right-hand half-Nelson combination. Kish pins Boynton in 2 minutes 45 seconds of the second period. Roger Kish proving why everyone believes he's an All-American out of Lapeer West. Roger Kish, the 171-pound Division II champion. All right, more wrestling coming your way. We still have four more champions to be crowned at the Division I and Division II level. We'll continue our coverage from Joe Louis Arena right after this. Welcome back inside Joe Louis Arena where they have crowned Stanley Cup champions before and now we're crowning wrestling champions here on Fox Sports Net. Let's get right back to the action in Division I, the 189-pound class. Clint Salisbury tries to follow up a team title with Temperance Bedford with an individual crown over unbeaten Bobby Everett of Saline. After a scoreless first period, Salisbury breaks the deadlock in the second period, scoring one point with a stand-up escape. Everett takes the lead with a strong high crotch takedown. Salisbury comes right back with a flurry of moves to score a two-point reversal just as the second period ending, making the score a three to two. No points scored in the third period, so that means Clint Salisbury holds off Bobby Everett and wins the 189-pound Division I championship 3-2. A couple of juniors will settle the 189-pound Division II score. John Dickerson of Eaton Rapids and Joe Urasich, who last year finished fourth with Battle Creek, Harper Creek. We pick up the match in the second period with Dickerson leading 3-1. Urasich attempts a double leg takedown and Dickerson counters with a quick go behind to score another two point takedown. Dickerson stays on the attack in the second period with a good single leg takedown to score another two points, increasing his lead to 7 2. In the third period, Urasich makes a valiant comeback attempt, scoring a two point takedown with an outstanding lateral drop throw, closing the lead to 7 5. But his comeback falls short. John Dickerson able to edge Joe Urasich for the 189 pound Division II championship, the final 9 7. The final wrestling match in Division I. At the 215 pound weight class, it pits. Eric Vanderhorst of Granville. He's grappling with All-American freestyler Spencer Nadalski of Holland, West Ottawa. We pick up the action in the third period with a score tied at zero. Vanderhorst is given a warning for stalling and Nadalski is awarded one point to take the lead. Nadalski cuts Vanderhorst loose and ties the score one to one. 
With 15 seconds remaining in the third period, both wrestlers are warned for stalling, and Nadolski is awarded one point to take a two to one lead. Wow, so he wins based off two warnings and two points awarded to him, so he wins the 215 pound championship. Have you ever seen something like that before? It happens, but it doesn't happen often. Wow, I tell you what, that's a tough way to win it and a tougher way to lose it. But Spencer Nadolski of Holland, West Ottawa, your 215 pound division one champion. Final match in Division Two, Willie Breyer of Oxford wrestles for a perfect campaign and the 215-pound championship. He's up against Brad Perry of Muskegon, Mona Shores. We pick up the action in the second period with Breyer leading 1-0. Breyer shoots a freight train double leg and scores a two-point takedown. In the third period, Breyer uses an awesome crossface, switches to a half Nelson, and pins Perry. So an impressive way to finish up the season for Willie Breyer of Oxford, winning via the pin at the 519 mark, and he captures the Division II 215 pound crown. Let's take a look back at all the crown bearers now. After this, at the Joe Louis Arena and the MHSAA Wrestling Championships in Division I. At the 275 pound class, Ryan Gritter of Granville won at 6-5 over Jack Gittler of Berkeley. Josh Chirella from Novi picked up a three pound crown. Ryan Beach of Walt Lake Western is your 112 pound champion. Brad Cusmano of Utica is the crown bearer at 119 pounds. Jack Scott of Holt won the 125 pound division. While at 130 pounds, Chase Metcalf of Davidson won that one. Dan Seedzik of Romeo is your 135 pound champion. Joe Zolme of Holt is the same at 140 pounds. Ryan Chirella is another champion from Novi and the first ever in that school's history to win it back-to-back -back titles. He did it at the 145 pound class. Zemwar Pittman is a three-time champion. Second straight year he's won it at the 152 pound class. Imad Karbush of Livonia Stevenson captured the championship at the 160 pound weight class. While at 171 pounds, Matt McCartney both championship honors from Roseville. Clint Salisbury of Temperance Bedford won the 189 pound class and Spencer Nadalski won it in the 215 pound weight division. The champions from division two, John Hurstein in the heavyweight division got things rolling here at the Joe Louis Arena in the 275 pound weight class. Tony Greathouse of Mason captured the 103 pound honors while Phil Schaefer from Mount Pleasant did the same in the 112 pound division. In 119 pounds, the best man in the state in Division II is Ian Durath. Jason Fellows from Lapeer West is the same at 125 pounds. Bill Devine from Fowlerville captured the 130-pound crown. And at 135 pounds, it's Aaron Beach from Jackson Northwest. Matt Cataline from Eaton Rapids defeated Calibo Boyle from Lowell in a very tight 2-1 match. And he wins the 140-pound Division II championship. James Kish of Lapeer West was a, an impressive winner at the 145 pound weight class. James Christie from Battle Creek Lakeview is your champion at 152 pounds in Division II. George Fairley from Chelsea is the same at the step up, the 160 pound level. Roger Kish capped off a perfect season from Lapeer West, winning at the 171 pound level. John Dickerson from Eaton Rapids was an impressive winner in the 189 pound class and Willie Breyer of Oxford pins Brad Perry of Muskegon Mona Shores to win the 215 pound Division II championship. We have seen 28 champions crown combined in Division I and Division II. It's been an exciting tournament, Mark. I think people got their money's worth, don't you agree? No question, Matt. Not only did they get their money's worth, but they were allowed to see 28 young men realize their dream to become a Michigan individual high school state wrestling champion. Folks, we hope you enjoyed our coverage as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. From Mark Torella, my name is Matt Shepard. Have a great rest of the year, and keep following wrestling at the Michigan High School State Championship level. The time has come the end of a long journey. To reach the top will take courage, strength, and endurance. Some will fall short, left with only disappointment and tears. The others will be crowned champions.
Lewis Arena has always been synonymous with Red Wings hockey and the greatest players to play at the National Hockey League level. But over the last three years, it has also meant the greatest high school wrestlers the state have to offer as well. It is here where 56 champions will be crowned, and it is here on Fox Sports Net in which you will see it. Hi, everybody. Alongside three-time national champion Mark Torella, my name is Matt Shepard. This is the Division Three and Division Four high school state championship matches. Nearly 900 wrestlers started out in quest of a championship crown, representing nearly 315 schools. An awful lot of hard work going into this one, right, Mark? Tremendous amount of hard work, Matt. They start out of the district, then the regional competition. They end up ultimately here at Joe Louis Arena. All of them searching for the same common goal, to be a Michigan individual high school state wrestling champion. And an awful lot of sacrifices need to be made if you want to get to this level. Talk about what it takes to get here. There's no question, Matt, there's a lot of sacrifice that's necessary to be a success in wrestling. The discipline with your weight, the discipline with the weight training, the discipline that you have to have overall to be a competitor. These young men at Joe Lewis Arena are all spying for that same goal, to be that Michigan individual state wrestling champion. Takes an awful lot of support in the home and in school as well. How do we break these divisions down now? We start with the big guys at 275 pounds, then we go into the small ones at 103 pounds, then on to 112, 119, 125, 130, 135, 140 pounds, 145, 152, 160, 171, 189, and end up with the 215 pounders. So let's get wrestling. Let's start with the Division Three heavyweights, 275 pounds. All right, a couple of record holders for their respective schools battle for supremacy at the 275 pound weight class in Division Three. Dan Cliffhuis of Grand Rapids West Catholic, a runner up a year ago against Bill Ferris, also a two time All Stater in football at Delton Kellogg High School. In the second period leading 1-0, Ferris counters Cliffowitz's headlock attempt and scores a two-point takedown with a leg trip in the last seconds of the period to take a 3-0 lead. And Ferris would go on and double up Cliffowitz 4-2 for the 275-pound Division III championship. An unbeaten heavyweight goes for his first state medal at the Division IV 275-pound weight class. Greg Perkins of Montebella aims for his 51st and most significant win of his career. He'll take on Dundee's record holder for pins in Jared Barnes. Perkins gets off to a quick start in the first period, scoring a two-point takedown on a great high crotch shot. Barnes fighting off Perkins' attempt to score a near fall, comes right back to score a reversal and tie the match 2-2. Two two. Railing 5-2 in the second period, Barnes hits an outstanding Granby roll to score a two-point reversal. Leading 12-6 in the third period, Perkins counters Barnes' attempt to throw and catches him on his back. Perkins pins Barnes in 5-26 of the third period. Barnes got down by too much too early to come back and Greg Perkins able to capitalize and wins the Division IV 275-pound weight championship. Let's take you back to Division Three At 103 pounds, it's Dwayne Baucamp from Grant High versus Caro's Joe Fulton. He's a conference, a district, and a regional champion. Could he be a state champion? After scoring a takedown early in the first period, Fulton catches Baucamp in a cross-face cradle and scores a three-point near fall to take a 5-0 lead. Later in the first period, Baucamp hits a stand-up and finishes with a high turn-in to score a two-point reversal. In the second period, Fulton finishes a Peterson roll to score a two-point reversal. Baucamp comes right back and rolls Fulton to score a two-point reversal. Fulton leading 7-4, goes to work in the third period and scores a two-point near fault with a great far side cradle. So the answer to the question is a definitive yes. Joe Fulton can be a state champion and is by beating Dwayne Baucamp of Grant 12-7 to win the 103-pound weight class in Division I. A pair of wrestlers with just two losses on the season set their sights on the 103-pound Division IV crown, Jason Chase of Napoleon and Brad Gardner from New Lothrop. We pick up the action in the first period with Gardner scoring a takedown on a high crotch single leg with a dump finish to score the first two points of the match. Chase ties the match 3-3 three three in the second period, scoring a two-point reversal with a solid switch. 
With the match tied 3-3 in overtime, Chase hits a tremendous high crotch that takes Garter to his back. Chase scores the pin in 6 minutes 38 seconds of the overtime. Second straight pin to decide a Division IV champion. This time it's Jason Chase at the 103-pound weight class. Senior Ryan Miller set the Ovid Elsie School record for wins. He's now wrestling for his first championship at the 112-pound Division III weight level. He's up against sophomore Jason Bull, who won the title for Reed City in the 103-pound class a year ago. Miller gets on the scoreboard first with a lightning quick low single leg takedown to score two points in the first period. Bull comes right back with a powerful switch to score a two point reversal and ties the match two to two. Regulation time ended with the score locked two to two. We pick up the match in overtime. Bull shoots a deep double leg takedown and scores two points to win the match. How about that? And it's a 7-5 overtime win for Jason Bull to capture the 112-pound Division III championship. A freshman from New Lothrop goes for the 112-pound Division IV title. Tim Ebenhoe at 55-1 battles defending state champion Matt Leiby. Ebenhoe grabs the lead at the end of the first period with a hard-fought double leg takedown. Leiby works from the bottom position in the second period. Leiby hits a stand-up and catches Ebenhoe with a chin whip to score a two-point reversal and ties the match at two. Leiby cranks Ebenhoe over with a vicious guillotine and scores a three-point near fall. Midway through the second period, Leiby unleashes a great far side cradle and scores a three point near fall to extend his lead nine to two. And Leiby would extend it to even more and win the Division IV 112 pound crown. Matt Leiby of Fulton Middleton, a 12 2 winner. Six champions crowned and plenty more to come. When we come back to Joe Lewis Arena, a look at some of the most successful wrestlers in Michigan history the Simmons brothers. That and more after this. MHSAA High School Wrestling Championships on Fox Sports Nat is proudly sponsored by Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable, by Little Caesars, and by Olympia Entertainment. Welcome back to Joe Lewis Arena. If you can, try and picture pitching a perfect game every time out. Maybe bowling a perfect 300 game every time out. Seems impossible. Seems impossible to go undefeated in your entire wrestling career as well. But that's exactly what Nick and Andy Simmons are going for. Nick Simmons blasted his way onto the Michigan wrestling scene in 1998 topping off a perfect 50-0 freshman season by winning the individual state championship in Division III at 103 pounds. He was joined the following year by his brother Andy, who repeated the feat his freshman season. Together, they won a team state championship in 1999 at Williamston on top of their respective individual championships. In 2000, Nick won his third state title and Andy won his second. The Simmons brothers come into the 2001 finals without a loss, ever. It's an accomplishment they are very proud of. Oh, it's a pretty good relationship. I mean, we have a little competition between us, but I don't know. We really don't like, we don't really compare our wrestling too much against each other. We just, we don't really care. We, we have a rivalry, but like, we just, we don't talk about it all the time. I mean, we root for each other. I mean, of course, but I know we just don't think about it that much. It's no surprise to the people who know the Simmons family. Their father, Scott, was himself a two-time Michigan wrestling champ, going undefeated his senior season. My dad's coached us since we were real small, and uh, he's always, he's at every minute, he's never missed a meet, so got a lot of support from him and my mom, because she puts up with us. The kids believe they were born to wrestle, and the national records they have racked up together prove they're right. 373 consecutive wins by brothers and 102 pins by brothers in a season are just a couple of the marks they have set. Nick Simmons plans on a future at Michigan State University, leaving younger brother Andy the burden of keeping the unbeaten streak alive. We don't take anyone lightly. We take it like it's our last match. But if everyone loses. I mean, you can't stay unbeatable forever. I mean, I lost when I was little. Everyone does. You got to start somewhere. 
Nick Simmons and Andy Simmons may be the most prolific wrestling tandem in the entire state of Michigan high school wrestling history. It's tough to beat these kids. They're hard-nosed, aren't they? And they certainly are. <laughs> Nick and Andy are two of the best wrestlers, not just in the state of Michigan, but in the United States. Nationally ranked, Nick top in the nation, Andy ranked third. Two of the best, and we're proud to have them here in Michigan. Yeah, and I think they'll continue on in their college years as well. We continue on from Joe Louis Arena with more wrestling when we come back on Fox Sports Net right after this. Welcome back to downtown Detroit at Joe Louis Arena, where wrestling is center stage, and it's center stage in our continuing coverage on Fox Sports Net. You know, no one has ever wrestled their high school career and gone unbeaten in all four years. Williamston's Nick Simmons goes for history and his fourth straight title against unbeaten Ryan Bullock of KPAC in the Division III 119 pound weight class. Simmons scores a quick takedown in the first period with a front headlock and spins behind to score two points. Leading 8-0 in the second period, Simmons works a powerful half Nelson into an extremely tight headlock to score the fall in 2 minutes 56 seconds of the second period. An impressive way to wrap up an impressive career for Nick Simmons who will now do his wrestling at Michigan State University. Tim Tanner, a senior from Springport, hopes to end his high school wrestling career with a 119-pound Division IV championship. After the semifinal match, Eric Klaus was unable to make weight. Tanner received the forfeit and was awarded this year's state title. So Tanner brings Springport its first championship of the 2001 campaign at the 119 Division IV level. Well, we talked about Ryan Miller earlier in our broadcast. Another Ryan, Ryan Frost of Tri-County Howard City, aims for the 125-pound Division III crown. He's up against Chris Smith of Wyoming Rogers, who finished second at 112 pounds in 2000. We pick up the action in the second period with Frost leading 3-2. Smith shoots a great double-leg takedown and drives Frost to his back with a half Nelson to score a two-point near fall. Froze scores a two-point takedown on a low single leg shot in the third period to take a 7-5 lead. Froze highs the match in the last five seconds of the third period on an excellent double leg takedown with a bear hug finish to force the match into overtime. Froze scores the takedown in overtime with a solid double leg shot to win the match. Second time that a Division III champion has needed overtime to pick up the crown. This time in the form of 125 pound weight class, it's Ryan Froch of Howard City, Tri-County. Two wrestlers with 53 win seasons meet in the 125 pound weight class in Division IV. Junior Max Wilkins from Whittemore Prescott up against Marlette freshman Curtis Roddy. After a scoreless first period, we pick up the action in the second. Wilkins works his way to his feet and scores the first points of the match with a one-point escape. In the third period, Roddy uses a front quarter Nelson and finishes with a headlock to score a two-point takedown and three-point near fall to grab a five-to-one lead. Wilkins works his way off his back and scores a two-point reversal to close the gap to 5-3. But it wasn't enough. Curtis Roddy, just a freshman, starts his high school career out on a high note. He wins the 125-pound Division IV championship, defeating Max Wilkins 5-3. Tri-County's Dan Thompson hopes to lay claim to another championship after taking the 112-pound honors last year. He goes for the Division III 130-pound hardware against Bobby Dodson of Abedelsi. Thompson gets off to a great start in the first period with a fireman's carry to grab a 2-0 lead. We pick up the match in the third period with Thompson leading 6-1. Dodson counters Thompson's leg right and scores a two-point reversal. Thompson comes right back with a stand-up and drag by to score a two-point reversal and extend his lead to 10-4. And that's how it would end. Dan Thompson of Howard City Tri-County wins the 130-pound Division III crown. The 130-pound crown in Division IV pits Hudson junior Nick Camp against Martin senior Travis Brenner, who looks for his 215th career win. Midway through the first period, Camp counters Brenner's takedown attempt and scores the first two points of the match. In the second period, 
Camp hits a great high crotch shot and scores his second takedown of the match, extending his lead to four. Brenner comes through with a power switch to score a two-point reversal and cut Camp's lead to 4-2. Brenner works a great power half Nelson and body scissor combination that results in a fall in three minutes, 41 seconds of the second period. Third pin so far of the day in Division Four. This time it's Travis Brenner of Martin with the honors to capture the 130-pound weight class. Well, stay right there. More wrestling to come as Fox Sports Net continues our coverage of the MHSAA Wrestling Championships from Joe Lewis Arena. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Fox Sports Net. More champions to be crowned at Joe Lewis Arena in downtown Detroit. We move our way to the Division Three 135-pound weight class. It pits a two-time champ and a two-time runner-up. Andy Simmons of Williamston aims to stay perfect in his three-year career. He battles Richmond's Ken Thomas. Leading 4-1 in the second period, Simmons goes on the attack and scores a two-point takedown on a front headlock go-behind. Simmons scores another takedown with a throw by and catches Thomas on his back for a two-point near fall. Trailing 17-5 late in the third period, Thomas scores a two-point takedown on a gator roll to make the score 17-7. So Andy Simmons wins his third straight championship and takes aim as he starts the 2002 season at his brother's record pace at Williamston. Andy Simmons, your 135-pound Division III champion. In the 135-pound Division IV-way class, Adam Cunningham tries for his second title in three years while at Whittemore Prescott. He's opposed today by Quincy Jr. Robert Casto. Cunningham scores the first points of the match in the first period with a quick go behind for a two-point takedown. Casto comes back and scores a one-point escape with a stand-up late in the first period. With the match tied 2-2 in the second period, Cunningham takes a two-point lead, scoring a quick shuck by takedown. Halfway through the third period, Cunningham scores on a hard-fought single-leg takedown and extends his lead 7-2. And he would bump it up a couple of points more and win it 9-3 to capture 135-pound honors in Division IV. Hey, Mark, another perfect season is on the line at the 140-pound Division III level. Ryan Tripp and his 60-0 record for Goodrich versus Luke Magenberg of Shepard. Tripp stays solid on a single leg shot and scores a two point takedown to start the match. With Magenberg leading 2-1 in the second period, Tripp scores a reversal from a stand up position to take a 3-2 lead. Tripp works an awesome far side cradle in the third period and scores a three point near fall to take a 6-2 lead. Wow, Tripp a perfect 61-0 on the year after beating Luke Magenberg of Shepard 6-3 to win the 140-pound Division III championship. Fulton Middleton's Jeremy Windsor hopes to put a capper on a perfect year as well. He finished second at 145 pounds last year in Division IV. Now, he goes for the 140-pound Division IV championship up against Jared Underhill from Allendale this season. After being awarded a one-point lead in the first period for an illegal move, Windsor scores a two-point takedown on a very tough single-leg shot, extending his lead in the match to 3-0. Underhill executes a solid stand-up and scores a one-point escape. In the third period, Windsor scores a two-point reversal on Underhill with a short fireman's carry pullover. And he's able to pull away 6-1 and win the 140-pound Division IV championship. In the 145-pound weight class in Division III, Casey Halberger hopes to give Williamston its third state champion at the Joe Lewis Arena. He'll have to get by Andy Frosch of Tri-County, though, to do it. Frosch gets on the scoreboard first with a crossbody single leg for a two-point takedown. The match tied 2-2. Two two. Frosch hits a quick two-point reversal, and Hollenberger comes right back with a short fireman's carry to score a two-point reversal and tie the match 4-4. Four four. In the second period, Frosch reverses Hollenberger with a high turn-in to take the lead 6-4. 
Hollenberger counters Frosch's far side cradle, reverses him for two points, and catches him with a great half Nelson to score a three-point near fall. Tell you what, Mark, what started out to be a very tight match ended up in a Casey Hullenberger runaway 15-6 to win the Division Three 145-pound crown. Hey, Mark, another perfect season is on the line in the 145-pound Division Four weight class. Alan Picard, if you recall, won the 140-pound crown a year ago with Allendale. This year, he goes for back-to-back -back championships, only this time a step up. He'll go up against Jack Hackasack of Clinton. Jumping out to a fast 4-1 lead in the first period, Picard goes right back on the attack and scores a two-point takedown with an excellent duck under and immediately looks for a pin with a quick pullback, scoring his second two-point near fall in the first period. In the second period, leading 10-4, Picard hits Hakishak with a lightning fast low single leg and scores a two-point takedown. With a commanding 12-5 lead in the third period, Picard scores yet another takedown with a good single leg shot. Picard scores his final takedown of the match with an underarm spin through to extend his lead to 17-5. And Picard finishes it off that way, 17-5 to capture the 145 pound division four honors. All right, we've crowned 18 champions so far, and when we come back, We'll introduce you to a young man who has fallen just short of that goal his first two tries here at the JLA. But he gets another shot this year. Josh Hildebrand's story when we come back on Fox Sports Net after this. Welcome back to Joe Louis Arena. It is difficult to get to this level. There's no question about it. But even more difficult if you reach the pinnacle and then fall just a little bit short. Josh Hildebrand knows that better than anybody else. He may be ranked number one in the state coming into the state championship match, but he has a couple of axes to grind. The last two years, he's finished a bridesmaid. I mean, he can be heard throughout every tournament, and my coaches are there every practice and every match. And on the mat, there's only so much people can do for you. They, what they do for you is done in practice. When they're pushing for you, that's done in practice. So, yeah, that's pretty much everyone else's role is to push you in practice. But when you're on the mat, it's all you. Josh Hildebrand, one of 11 Division IV wrestlers, unbeaten heading into the state championships, one of 33 overall. And what amazes me most, Mark Torella, is the priorities these kids have to get to this level. Well, there's no question, Matt. There's one thing that's a really important factor here. That's luck. you got to be lucky to stay healthy. And these kids that have been able to stay healthy and stay on their training plan are the ones that are doing the best and are still undefeated. All right, when we come back, Josh Hildebrand's final match of the year against Andy Salenbein for the state championship. 
It comes your way on Fox Sports Net after this. There are more champions to be crowned here at Joe Louis Arena, so let's get right back to it. You're on Fox Sports Net. Portland's Jonah Lyon won the 152-pound weight class in Division Three in 2000. He tries to make it back-to-back -back titles against first-time qualifier Aaron Boone of Otsego. Boone hits a super headlock and scores a two-point takedown and two-point near fall. Lyon slips out of the headlock to score a two-point reversal, making the score of 4-2 in the first period. And that's enough to give him the crown, Mark. He wins it 5-3 to capture the Division Three 152-pound bragging rights. St. Charles's Greg Goitasek sports the lone unblemished record in the 152-pound weight class in Division Four. He tries to keep it that way against Ithaca sophomore C.J. Waldron. Goitasek grabs the lead in the first period with a strong double leg shot, scoring a two-point takedown. Waldron combines a sit-out to a stand-up and scores a one-point escape. Leading 4-1 in the third period, Goitasek scores a switch to a stand-up for a one-point escape. Goitasek works an outstanding throw-by from his feet to score a two-point takedown and extend his lead to 7-1. And that's how it would end. Greg Goitasek of St. Charles wins the 152-pound crown in Division Four. A sophomore and senior duke it out for top honors in the Division Three 160-pound weight class. In just his second year, Wynn Mahalik owns Carroll's school record for wins in a season with 59. He's up against R.J. Boudreau of Armada, who finished third last year. We pick up the action in the first period. Mahalik scores a two-point takedown with a powerful double-leg shot. Leading 3-0 in the second period, Mahalik shoots another great double-leg takedown and scores two more points. Mahalik finishes a hard-fought single-leg takedown at the end of the second period to extend his lead 7-2. Boudreaux works to his feet in the third period to score a one-point escape. But that's all he can muster when Mahalik wins the 160-pound Division III crown. Yet another undefeated wrestler aims for a state title at the 160-pound Division IV weight class. Josh Hildebrand from Martin, 55-0, and, and a runner-up the last two seasons, set to take on Dundee standout Andy Salenbein. Salenbein scores a takedown in the first period with a crossbody arm block and adds a two-point near fall that Hildebrand slips out of and scores a one-point escape to make the match score 4-1. Hillebrand was injured in the flurry of moves and was unable to complete the match. Well, that's an unfortunate way to end the season for Josh Hildebrand. Andy Salenbein crowned the 160-pound Division IV champion. The 171-pound class in Division III pits Dan Casewar, a second-place finisher for Durand last year, against Clintondale's Andrew Klisch. With the match tied 0-0 in the second period, Case Moore scores a two-point reversal on a stand-up quick turn-in. Case Moore shoots a solid single leg and fights off Klish's wizard counter to score a two-point takedown, extending his lead over Klish to 4-0. In the third period, Klish closes the gap with a strong stand-up, scoring a one-point escape to make the score 4-2. And that's how it would end. Dan Casemore able to hold off a late flurry from Andrew Klish and wins the 171-pound Division III championship. Last year's 171-pound Division IV champion is back for a possible another medal in 2001. Keith Muckey of Hesperia brings his 43-0 record into the title match against Athens junior Justin Neal. Mucky jumps off to a quick 2-0 lead with an overpowering high single leg takedown. Neil gets right back in the match, hitting a switch which resulted in a one point escape. In the third period, Mucky executes a great inside high turn in and scores a two point reversal to increase his lead to 4-1. Yeah, and that reversal allowed him to capture the crown 4-1 over Justin Neal and claim top honors in the Division IV 171 pound weight class. Well, we have felt great bringing you a number of champions so far here at Joe Louis Arena, but you're gonna feel even more inspired when you hear the story of Scott Zusko. That comes your way next on Fox Sports Net.
Welcome back to Joe Lewis Arena. Folks, when you cover sports, you look for the, the silver lining. You look for the inspiration. You don't need to look any further than the next piece. His name is Scott Zesko. He comes into the state championship with just one loss and a guy you can't help but root for. We first started documenting Scott Susco's incredible journey in 1999, when as a sophomore, he amazed and delighted those at Joe Louis Arena with a fourth place finish at the state finals. You have to have, be strong-willed, strong-minded, and Scott has all those things, and plus he's physically gifted as well. Uh, you know, he's an athlete, and uh, with his character and with his determination, that's, that's what makes him succeed. A lot of people are like always congratulating me and be like, yeah, you're awesome. I'm glad you're doing this and it just makes me feel good. Scott answered his first trip to the Joe with two exceptional encores. Last year, he returned to States and placed fifth. This season, he completed his high school career with a personal best 54 and two record while taking third. Now, if these achievements aren't impressive enough, consider this. Scott Susco has accomplished these feats despite having just one leg. At the tender age of 12, the spirited young boy started experiencing severe pain in his left leg. Actually, I was at a bas my sister's basketball banquet and I got in the car that night and I just, it was pain I couldn't stand. It was like a Charlie horse, but won't go away. And Our local call packed it took an x-ray of it and he didn't like what he's seeing. And he sent me to another doctor and he wasn't really sure and we wanted a second opinion on what it was and that's when he sent us Dr. Irwin here in Detroit. The diagnosis was all yours, a type of bone cancer which is highly fatal. Suddenly, the adolescent faced a very adult decision. The doctor called me at work and told me he wanted to take his leg off. And uh, that was pretty bad. And he told me I could either get my leg amputated or I, he could replace every bone in my leg, but it would increase the chance of the cancer spreading. Did you understand the magnitude at that age? Yeah, I, I understood. I knew what cancer was and then basically I just couldn't believe it was me. And I just said, hey, which one can I play sports with? He said, amputate it. So that was my decision. At first it was kind of frustrating, but then it's like, hey, it happened. I just gotta get used to it now. I just went on. Scott's passion for sports, particularly wrestling, pushed him to persevere. I had changed my form a little bit. Like, at first I dropped down, I wrestled off my knee instead of standing up, but basically it was the same form, just my stance was different. Initially, that disparity garnered most of the attention. But with each return to the state final, Scott soon became accepted as just another tough competitor. I think a lot of the, uh, the novelty of his one leg is, is starting to dwindle. Um, you know, most of the coaches that have seen him now, and like I say, he's been here, so the state has seen him, and, uh, and, and they're accepting him now, too, as being a wrestler. You know, like, just like everyone else in our area does. You know, he's just a wrestler, and he's a damn good one. And this four-time team captain has become an inspiration to all. Uh, one coach talked to me, his, one of his kids lost a leg, and uh, he says, boy, I wish my kid was here watching, you know, because oh, what a great inspiration. And he is. Yeah, to, you know, to us, you know, he's just, he's just Scott. But uh, to a lot of other people that, you know, they have come talk to me, you know, he is an inspiration. I mean, he's doing things that, you know, no one would ever expect him to. Whenever anybody comes up to me, it always, yeah, it makes me feel good and makes me know I'm making other people happy and I hopefully it'll help like somebody else with a amputee or even not even amputee, just disability. Hopefully it'll give them a little drive. Wow, what an inspiration Scott Susco is. How pleasing has it been for you to watch a guy like this wrestle in your sport for the last three years? Scott Susco can be wrapped up real simply. He's a good wrestler and he earns those victories mm -hmm. and he's certainly proven it here today. Yeah, he's an excellent role model for a lot of the little kids as well. When we come back, more role models take to the mat. More wrestling on Fox Sports Net in a moment. Third place is Scott Susco of Standish Sterling.
Welcome back to Joe Louis Arena, site of the MHSAA Wrestling Championships here on Fox Sports Net. We've moved our way to the Division Three 189 pound weight class. It comes down to first time qualifier Kyle Ahrens of Imlay City and Bart Bennett, who owns Birch Run's school record for wins, pins, and takedowns. Bennett scores the first takedown of the match in the first period with a great high crotch shot. Trailing 4 0 in the second period. Aaron scores a one-point escape when Bennett gets too high with his leg attack. Bennett works his vicious front headlock to score another takedown, extending his lead to 6-1. In the third period, Bennett adds to his lead, countering Aaron's high crotch shot to score yet another takedown. Bennett, a very impressive win in capturing the Division III 189-pound championship. In the 189-pound weight class of Division IV, we got a couple of first-time finalists, Mark. Dundee's Brandon Johnsek and Todd Tripp of Morency. Son of former Michigan wrestler Gary Johnsek, Johnsek scores the first takedown of the match with an overpowering bear hug at the end of the first period. Leading 5-0 in the second period, Johnsek scores another takedown with a great front headlock go-behind. Trailing 7-1 in the third period, Tripp scores a two-point takedown when he counters Johnsick's attempt to hit a step over. But Johnsick follows in his father's footsteps well and beats Todd Tripp of Morenci 8-4 to capture bragging rights in the 189-pound Division IV. In the 215-pound Division III class, Steve Bednarik, a runner-up two years ago, seeks to become Ross Common's first individual crown bearer He'll battle Tony Grigorzik of Grand Rapids, West Catholic. After getting off to a quick 5-0 lead in the first period, Grigorzik catches Benarek on his back with a perfectly timed high step over to score a two-point near fall. Benarek hits Grigorzik with an elevator side roll to score a one-point escape. At the start of the second period, Benarek scores a two-point reversal with a stand-up switch combination to narrow the lead to 7-3. In the third period, Grigorzik explodes off the bottom with a high single leg step over, scoring a two point reversal and using a strong half Nelson score as a three point near fall. So Grigorzik had two points of this match where he scored five straight points. He started out 5 0, and then while up 7 3, made a 5 0 run at the end to win it 12 3 and capture the Division Three 215 pound honors. In the 215-pound Division IV weight class, Dustin Brock of Springport, who won the championship last year, battles Mike Walden from Galesburg, Augusta, who sports a perfect 52-0 record. Something has to give here, Mark. Taking that undefeated record into the finals, in the closing seconds of the first period, Brock scores a two-point takedown, countering Waldron's lateral drop throw attempt. Trailing 3-0 in the third period, Waldron works his way to his feet and scores a one-point escape. Brock spins behind Waldrons and scores a two-point takedown to extend his lead to 6-1. And Dustin Brock is your 215-pound Division IV champion with a 6-1 decision. So let's run down our champions from Division III and Division IV for you. In Division III, the 275-pound crown bearer is Bill Ferris of Delton Kellogg. Joe Fulton of Caro wins in Division III's 103-pound weight class. Jason Bull is the champion at 112 pounds. Nick Simmons, with his fourth straight championship and an undefeated high school career, takes the 119-pound crown. Ryan Frosch of Howard City, Tri-County, is earning top honors at the 125-pound weight class. In 130 pounds, it's Dan Thompson of Howard City, Tri-County. Andy Simmons at 135 pounds, wins representing Williamston. At the 140 pound weight class, Ryan Tripp of Goodrich is your champion. Williamston's third state champion is Casey Hullerberger at the 145 pound weight class. Aaron Boone won the 152 pound weight class from Otsego. At 160 pounds, the crown will be worn by Wynn Mahalik of Carroll. Dan Casemore picks up a close but decisive win for Duran to capture the 171 pound crown. At 189 pounds, it's Bart Bennett from Birch Run and Tony Grigorzik captures the 215 pound crown 
from Grand Rapids West Catholic. In Division 4, Greg Perkins at the 275 pound weight class wins the championship representing Blanchard Montebello. Jason Chase from Napoleon wins at 103 pounds. Matt Leiby does the same at 112 pounds representing Fulton Middleton. Springport's Tim Tanner captures top honors at 119 pounds. Curtis Roddy did the same at the 125 pound weight class. Martin's Travis Brenner is the 130 pound champion. At 135 pounds, it's Adam Cunningham from Whittemore Prescott. Jeremy Windsor is the champion at 140 pounds from Fulton Middleton. Allendale's Travis Picard is the champion at 145 pounds. The 152 pound crown bearer is Greg Goydesik of St. Charles. Andy Salenbein takes home the 160 pound medal from Dundee. Keith Muckey from Hesperia picked up the win in the 171 pound weight class. Brandon Jonasek from Dundee did the same at 189 pounds, and the 215 pound champion in Division IV is Dustin Brock of Springport. There are now 56 champions crowned in the year 2001 at the Division I, II, III, and IV levels here at the Michigan High School State Wrestling Championships. Mark, I think everybody thoroughly enjoyed this championship. We saw a lot of great events, a lot of great athletes, but more importantly, it was a great show for everybody. There's no question, 56 new champions, 56 dreams realized. I hope they enjoyed it. I certainly did. The best wrestling we can get in the state of Michigan happened here at Joe Lewis Arena. Enjoyed working with you very much, Mark. We appreciate your time. We appreciate everybody's effort here who helped put on this great event here at Joe Lewis Arena. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. For Mark Torella, my name is Matt Shepard. Keep following wrestling.